Hi, welcome to the signal path or the noise path, depending on how long this particular repair would take us. This is the Roden Shores URE2 RMS voltmeter. Now, it may not seem like much, but this is a very high demand instrument for its ability to measure very, very large RMS values and very large DC values simultaneously and give you precise RMS measurement. It's actually quite sophisticated internally. And if you look at it, you'll notice right away that there's a DC and then a comma and then 10 hertz to 25 megahertz. And this discontinuity already tells us something. It's pretty easy to measure DC, but it's also very difficult to measure AC down to, let's say, 1 hertz. And that's why that discontinuity is there. This also tells us that there must be two separate measurement paths in this instrument. One measurement path that handles DC and the other measurement path that handles these other remaining ranges. And it will integrate all the signal in that other range and give you the RMS value. Now sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. It has a very particular error. Let me turn it on and see if that error even shows up because it doesn't always show up. It only has a power button in the back. If I can find it, here we go. So when you turn it on, it goes through some power up sequence and some internal testing and it should say something, hopefully, it should pass self-test, there it is, self-test okay, so it does pass its own internal self-test. Now if I go under mode, you can see that it does have a few different modes, it can measure DC, AC, or AC plus DC, and that tells us already that there is more than one path, of course. Now, it's not able to give me any DC measurements, but it does return the correct AC measurement, and every once in a while when I turn it back on and off, there you go, that's it, this is the error device error 0080 and this error shows up every once in a while but not always which means the problem is intermittent now when you turn on and off you can hear all the relays click in and more importantly when you select for example DC or only AC I can hear a relay click internally so it's switching things on and off so let's quickly try this and convince ourselves that there is a difference between the AC and the DC path measurement so right now I have set this arbitrary wave from generator at 1 kilohertz and 1 volt RMS and you can see we're measuring nothing because the output is disabled I'm going to go and enable the output, and we should see about 1 volt RMS once it settles down. There you go. So it is kind of measuring the AC signal, which makes sense. Now, if under this exact condition, I change the mode to DC, we should see nothing, because this is an AC signal, of course, and there should be no DC content. And there you go. It's reading zero, no problem. But then if I change the waveform, and I actually make the waveform a DC waveform up here, and I apply, for example, a 1 volt DC, like so, we're getting still nothing. You can see it's reading basically gibberish. It went back to zero if Push could get his head out of the way. So yeah, so it's not measuring DC and that's actually the problem. So whenever I boot this up with AC and DC paths enabled is when I see the error. So it's definitely related to that. So the instrument has two main boards in it. One is the power supply plus the processor board and the other one is all the analog board which we have the problem with. And just look how beautiful this piece of engineering is and I really like the way Rodenshaw has put their instruments together. So we have our transformer, voltage regulator section, a very, very large full bridge rectifier, some more interfaces for the GPIB over here, and apparently a room for some I.O. expansion card that this instrument doesn't seem to have. The main processor here, some memory which is backed up by the battery, as well as the firmware, and the display driver directly connects to the display over here. Nothing unusual over here. I don't think there's anything wrong with this side of the instrument anyway, because all the power supplies seem to be correct. And on the other side, we have a fully enclosed section with all these sub-circuits labeled over here on the cover and holes to adjust various things. And if you remove that, we see all the analog section. Again, just so nicely put together. And consider that there isn't a speck of flux or any dirt on these boards. They really clean these things before they ship them. So here are our suspect relays. Look at that. Two of them in the front. That's the very first thing the instrument front end connects to. There's a gas discharge tube over here in order to protect it in case you are putting too much voltage in there to be able to basically shunt it out. And there's another one over here, interestingly, which must be with respect to the chassis ground because I think this entire analog board is floating and therefore you have to make sure you don't charge it too much. So the different sections responsible for different parts of amplification, rectifying DC and AC range switching and so on are separated using these dividers, which is not uncommon in analog circuits and sensitive mixed signal design. At the bottom over here, we have the processor interface to up to isolators, so this section is certainly mixing things into digital now. And there's a burp around DAC, I think, here, uh, with a ceramic package. So there's also a voltage divider here, actually. That voltage divider most likely is part of the DC path. And then you have a couple of variable capacitors that probably adjust some frequency responses and so on, and tuning, and some other varactors around scattered, and some potentiometers for offset corrections and things like that. 
and it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this entire board to access these relays and remove them and there appears to also be a whole bunch of surface mount components on the other side and probably here we see there's nothing on this side there must be components on the other side they're basically putting all the through holes on one side and all the surface mounts on the other and that helps a lot in the assembly of the board and the way it is handled and how glue is applied and so on to hold the components during various soldering stages so let's take it out and take a look at the other side and here is the back of that board and just like we suspected a whole bunch of surface mount components on the other side no through holes and with the magic of television if I flip this over there we go I have replaced the two relays I replaced them at the same time because we want them to be at the same age and here we go these are the original ones the original ones were made in Germany these are Panasonic equivalents made in Japan and I removed two of them at the same time let's put it back and see if this solves the issue I also went ahead and took apart one of the broken relays and to see how it looks on the inside it's a really cool construction so we do have the four contacts here 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 and here and you can see two of them are normally open and two of them are normally closed there's also two permanent magnets on this one calibrated to the just right amount of magnetic field so that you can overcome it with a coil inside when the power is applied the body of this twists like that and it rotates around that axis and that causes two of the switches to disconnect the other two to connect and basically overcome the strength of these magnets it's a really cool construction I don't think I've ever taken a relay apart that has this twisting motion typically I'm used to back and forth motion on this where you just basically have a whole bunch of connections that connect and disconnect this is a very interesting design and here's our setup to try and see if we have corrected the problem I have a few things going on so let me explain that we have the Roden Shorts URE2 of course and it is set to DC mode and that's the mode that it wasn't functioning right now we're reading nothing of course now the input of this instrument is connected directly to the HP3248A which is also applying a zero volt DC so it's no surprise that we're reading nothing now at the same time I have split the output and I've also connected it to the HP3400B which is a similar instrument but it has a much lower frequency range it also does not measure DC at all now in a previous video I upgraded this instrument with its own digital display because it only has an analog display and I added a whole bunch of circuitry to read the range and digitize and display all kind of information up here so it's a lot easier to use you can see that video in my channel it's a really fun little project so we're basically measuring them at the same time even though this guy cannot measure DC so first thing first have we fixed the DC problem and let's apply one volt DC which we can do very easily by applying one volt like so and let's see what we read here this takes a bit of time there you go look at that 0 0.9999 so it is in fact working the DC problem is now fully gone so the instrument should be able to measure both now AC and DC and that error we were seeing is also completely gone now we can change the mode here and we can mode it in, put it into AC plus DC and if you notice the value will be slightly different look at that and this was puzzling at the beginning and I'll explain to you what is going on and I discovered some unusual behavior from this instrument that I didn't know was there we'll get to that in a second but let's see if we can measure the AC signal now so instead we're going to apply a 1 volt peak to peak signal at 1 kilohertz and we should be able to see look at that how cool is that 0 0.3530 which is exactly correct that's 1 volt peak to peak divided by 2 times the square root of 2 and now these guys agree right because this is measuring the RMS value as well and they're both giving us the same number which is really promising we can make the number a little bit larger let's try twice as much here we go we should see twice as much and indeed we do see twice as much and this guy also produces twice as much so it is fully functional which is really exciting now back to that peculiar problem I was talking about if I put this instrument into zero volts at DC you would expect that there is nothing coming out of it of course there is nothing coming out of it at DC we saw that if I change the mode here purely to DC we will see that it is producing essentially nothing there you go so there's no DC content at all but if I put it into AC mode we will see some measurement let's wait for it to stabilize look at that 0 0.824 millivolt RMS well is that real or not well we can put this instrument into its lowest range as well right over here and see if it produces a signal too and look at that it's there this signal and this signal are now very very close to each other keep in mind that this thing has a much less accuracy than this one but yeah that signal is present so this guy is putting out a tone at around 26 kilohertz or so it's a very very small signal as you can see but it's generating that if you have one of these I would very much appreciate if you could try it and tell me that if this is a problem with my instrument or these instruments just simply put out a tiny bit of AC signal at high frequency of course it makes no difference with DC measurement but I'm curious if there's a problem in there or it's just normal 
DHP source here also has a 10 times multiplier on it. So I'm right now applying a 10 volt peak to peak and it's multiplied by 10. So it's a 100 volt peak to peak signal and is measuring the RMS value of that without any issues and both of these agree as well. So let's try a scenario where we would be using this URE2 for some DC-DC converter noise characterization. So I have a battery pack over here. This is just a USB measuring device and there is a load there. And at the same time, the voltage from the USB is being fed into our URE2. So if I plug this in here, you can see that this will turn on and it will tell us that we're getting 5 volts over here and this is measuring DC and you can see we're measuring the same voltage on both of them. Now if I change this mode and put this mode to AC, the DC no longer goes through the instrument and we're now only seeing the noise of the DC-DC converter. The noise right now is 2.7 millivolt, but we're drawing almost no current. So basically we are not putting it under any load. But I can increase this and apply some load to the battery pack. And look at what happens to the noise. We're already at 3, there's 6. I can increase that up until we hit 1 amp of current through the USB port. And let's keep going, and here is about 1 amp, right? And the voltage drops a little bit. And look at that, the noise is already 13 millivolt RMS. And this is very helpful because you don't have to be measuring this at 5 volts. You could measure this at a 200 volt power supply and still get the same level of accuracy, reading very fine values of RMS noise on top of it. Very, very helpful. And I can always just switch back this to DC, for example, and we should still see the same value over here, 4.991, there it is. You can see the measure, and this, of course, is not very accurate, but this is super helpful. And for characterizing power supplies and so on, it's interesting. And the fact that this goes to 25 megahertz, ironically enough, even though this is obsolete, is more useful now because DC-DC converters have moved to higher and higher frequencies, so the noise is spread across a wider bandwidth. So being able to capture the RMS value of a really broadband noise is more helpful than it was in the past. I'm sort of glad that we managed to get this thing up and running. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the repair of this Roden Shores URE2. There's actually a URE3, which goes to 30 megahertz, has some additional functions and a backlight, which would have been very helpful in recording of this video. I would love to get my hand in one of those as well. As always, thanks a lot to the Patreon supporters. You can also support the channel with PayPal. The link is in the description. You make all of this possible. And if you know anything about that HP source that has that unusual AC power coming out of it, let me know in the comment section as well. As always, see you next time.